Hello and welcome to part three of my hand tools section. This is part three on pipe wrenches. What is a pipe wrench? This is what your normal pipe wrench is going to look like. They come in multiple different colors depending on the brand. Um, uh, like rigid, I think rigids are usually a uh, silver color. This is a cobalt, so it's blue. Um, I have a bunch of orange ones um, from random manufacturers. So the color is not important. Um, it's the, the style of the wrench. It's called a Stilson wrench. Um, Daniel C. Stilson invented this in Massachusetts, United States, in 1869. And now it's a very, very common uh, tool used in industry and plumbing and anywhere where you need to turn um, a piece of threaded pipe is what these are generally used for. Um, it's also called a Stilson patterned wrench because it's the pattern that he patented the style. Um, so how does this thing operate here? Um, it's an adjustable wrench. You turn this to move the jaws in and out. Um, it has a cast body. It's usually cast. Um, this part's the body. This part is called the hook jaw. Um, and it has intentional slop built into it. And it also is spring loaded. So you can see it bounces back and forth right there. You'll notice that the jaws are not parallel. Um, so if you've never used one of these things before, the first thing that you'll do is put it on whatever you're trying to turn. If you've never used one before and you're not familiar with it, you're probably trying to put it on a hex bolt, which you shouldn't do anyway. Um, you'll put it on and you'll tighten this up like you would with a, an adjustable, a normal adjustable open end wrench. Um, that's, and you'll think, man, this thing must be really old or broken because it's got a lot of slop in it and it wobbles around and it's, it's, you know, seems like it's poorly made, but that's how it's supposed to be. That's what the way it's designed. Um, some other features of this are that it has serrated teeth inside these jaws. There's teeth and they're angled. So these top teeth are angled back and while well, in this one, the bottom teeth are not angled, they're square, but the top teeth are angled back to grab them up on into the pipe when you turn it. Um, that's part of the reason that you, you only want to use this on pipe because anything else that you put this on to try to turn, these teeth are real sharp. They're designed to cut into the pipe to grab. It's going to mess up whatever hardware, whatever fastener you're trying to turn with it. Um, you'll see that when you get out into industry, when you go around and look at different pieces of equipment or work on stuff, You'll, you'll know that somebody put a pipe wrench on something when you see these equidistant lines of like gouges in a piece in something, you'll see, oh, okay, obviously somebody used a pipe wrench on that um, and they shouldn't have. And eventually you, you tear the stuff up so bad that you're rounding the corners off of, of uh, if it's like a big hex bowl or like a plug or something like that. Um, it eventually destroys the hardware because these teeth are, are hardened. These are hard, sharp teeth that are made to cut into something. So. This should only ever be used on pipe. Um, these are only designed to turn in one direction. So you want to put it on a piece of pipe like that and turn it that way. You can't turn it this way because the jaw will open back up. It's designed to do that. Um, so these jaws are out of square so that when you tighten down on the pipe, it basically binds in there. So you could have a piece of pipe. I'll put some pictures up of this. Have a piece of pipe and you put the wrench on it and it'll grab into the pipe and it'll hang right on there and you turn it. But if you go this way, it releases, the hook jaw releases and you, it'll pop right off the pipe. So if you want to turn it the other direction, you just flip the wrench around and grab it from the other way and turn it that way. Um, these are classified by length. So this one says 14 inch. Um, depending on the manufacturer, some places go by the length of the handle. Some places go by the OAL or overall length, they call it. So if you see um, in a listing where it says like 14 inch OAL, that's the length from the very back of the handle to the very top of the hook jaw. Um, other places will say um, like 10 inch handles. So just from here to here would be 10 inches. So the overall length of the wrench would be longer than 10 inches. Um, like I said, it's usually um, cast steel body and hardened steel jaws, um, like a high carbon steel jaws that are hardened. And they make replacement jaw sets for these too. If you eventually wear them out, um, you can order a replacement jaws if you have a really nice expensive pipe wrench. Instead of buying a, a whole new wrench, you can just buy the replacement set. Um, what else do I want to talk about? So these are almost always steel, um, rigid and a couple of other uh, higher end um, companies make ones that have an aluminum body now. 
which is nice if you have a really big pipe wrench that's steel, it's heavy and carrying that thing around all the time and up and down ladders and, and all that gets real old. So if you get one that's aluminum, it weighs a lot less, um, still has hardened steel jaws, but the body of it's aluminum. So it's a lot less weight to have to lug around. If it's something that you're using all the time, um, that might be worth it for an investment. Um, so next let's talk about what these are used for and how they're used. Um, they're used for threaded pipe and pipe fittings. I'll put some pictures in the video, um, like black iron pipe and galvanized steel pipe is what they're used for. Um, so you adjust the size to whatever your pipe is and you want the pipe to get grabbed right in the middle of the jaws as best you can. So if you have it open a little bit too far, the pipe will sit all the way back against the hook jaw and that's not how you want it because you see how it's spring loaded. If it's all the way back, it's kind of holding it open a little bit. You want it in a little bit. So when you turn it this way, these serrated angled jaws in the front will grab into the pipe and it'll bind in between the two. I'll put a, a clip of how that looks so you can actually see what it does when it's on a pipe. Um, and like I said, it only goes this way. You can't take it back the other way. If you need to loosen something, you need to flip it around and grab from the bottom and go that way. Or if you have room, grab, grab from the other side of the pipe. Um, so if it's not grabbing or if it's not working the way it should, um, a lot of times it'll be that the, the teeth are either worn out or they're clogged up with something. Like if you're doing a lot of like black iron pipe, um, it'll, the finish on the outside of the pipe gets a little bit um, mangled when you use these. And over time you can have your teeth fill in. They'll either get dulled or worn down or get filled in with just debris and pieces of pipe and all that so that they're not sharp anymore and it doesn't grab. Um, so you'll put it on and it'll just slip the whole way around the pipe. Um, so look at your teeth, if that's, that's happening. And you can take a wire brush and clean these teeth out and you can get a better grip on it. Um, what else was I gonna say about these? So you use these on pipe that have tapered threads on the end, usually tapered threads. What you don't use these on is pretty much anything else. Um, like I said, when you're working in industry, you'll, you'll see things that have been mangled by pipe wrenches, um, from people that, you know, didn't have the time or patience or inclination to go back and get the right tool, but they had a pipe wrench with them at the time. Uh, we, we don't do that. Or people that just don't know any better. Um, you guys are in an advantage because you're learning all these things about tools and hardware and equipment, but a lot of people that you'll work with have been self-taught and they see a wrench and they say, Oh, it's adjustable. I'll take this and it'll fit on all the different pieces of, of equipment that I have to work on. I'll just keep turning it and adjust it to whatever size I need. And that's great. This is just what I need. Um, they don't know that they're going to destroy most of the stuff that they put this wrench on. If it's not a piece of black iron pipe. Um, or galvanized steel pipe. It's also not used for conduit. It's like, I see people use these with a uh, rigid conduit too. Um, you don't want to do that. You don't want to use it on tubing, like stainless steel tubing or copper. Um, cause like tubing and copper pipe, um, and like EMT conduit, you're just going to completely destroy it. Cause like I said, there's like a pinching action where it binds onto the piece of pipe, but if it's soft pipe, you're just mangling it. You're crushing the pipe, um, or you're just pinching it off, pinching the pipe completely shut, like, especially with copper or any kind of small piece of tubing. Um, and then like stainless steel, stainless steel tubing, not only are you going to destroy the tubing with this wrench, um, also you're not really going to get a good grab on it because the finish on stainless steel tubing is really smooth. Um, and these teeth can't really, they're so far apart and tubing's kind of small. These teeth don't really grab. So you're going to try to grab onto a piece of tubing or something that's real smooth on the outside. And the wrench is just going to slip around because the teeth can't, there's nothing for the teeth to grab onto because it's too, uh, too smooth of a finish. But then if you do grab it, chances are you're just going to pinch that piece of tubing shut or you're going to bend it really badly. Um, cause that's not what these are designed for. These are designed for, um, heavy pieces of pipe that can withstand the, the grabbing action of the, the hook jaw and the teeth. Um, so you want to avoid the same things, um, that you want to avoid with, like I discussed Allen wrenches and combination wrenches. You don't want to put an extension. Um, if you work somewhere that has, uh, like a community set of tools that everybody uses, um, and they have pipe wrenches, 
chances are you're going to see a pipe wrench that has a bent handle because people do that all the time. Um, they put, put it on something that they can't get off and they put a long piece of pipe as an extension on the end of this handle and they're standing on the end of the extension and all that. And you'll definitely see pipe wrenches that have bent handles because, you know, people are not taking care of the tools because they're not their tools. Usually is, is what the case is. Those are the company's tools and, and, uh, you know, that, and they're self-taught and they don't know, um, that you shouldn't do that. And they don't know that the handle is going to, going to bend until it's too late until it already did it. Um, what sizes do these come in? Um, they come in anywhere from three inches, I think is the smallest one. And again, we're going by length. Um, this is a 14 inch, um, all the way up to, you know, four feet. They're super long ones. Um, if you see contractors on your job site or the place that you work at, that's that use pipe wrenches all the time, you'll see that they're set. Um, usually they'll have some pipe wrenches that are three or four feet long. It's pretty common. Um, you can get a lot of leverage on a three or four foot long pipe wrench. So the most important takeaways for pipe wrenches are that they're only used on pipe and that the teeth need to be clean to grab onto the pipe and that you can only turn in one direction. Um, the, really the, the biggest thing that I want you guys to know is to not use these like a, an adjustable open end wrench on hex bolts. Um, people do it all the time and it, it just mangles everything. Um, that's, that's the biggest, most important takeaway is that these are used on pipe. Um, they're not used on anything else. There's, a, I mean, they're called a pipe wrench. It's right in the name, just pipe. <laughs> um, and you'll, you'll definitely see it. You'll see other people using them on everything. And that's, that's not going to be you. You're going to know better and you're going to get the right tool for the right job. For a leaky faucet or other plumbing emergency, a pipe wrench is the go-to tool. The jaws on the wrench are designed to fit around smooth round pipes so the pipes can be gripped and turned. But how do they make the wrench adjustable so it can clamp down tightly on almost any size pipe? Making a pipe wrench starts with melting down raw metals into cast iron so it can be poured into a mold to cast the long, strong handles for the wrenches. Cast iron is a mix of two main materials, raw iron and scrap steel. Together, they make a ductile cast iron that's both strong and flexible. To mix the cast iron, the metal is dumped into an electric furnace that heats it to 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The furnace can hold 12 tons of melting metal or enough to make over 2,300 wrench handles 18 inches in length. It takes 45 minutes for the materials inside the furnace to melt. Then the cast iron is moved to a holding furnace that keeps up to 50 tons of iron red hot and ready to go. The handles themselves are cast using a polyurethane template that's pressed by a machine into a bed of sand to make a mold, just like pressing your hand into the sand at the beach. When the molds are ready, a huge two-ton ladle transfers molten iron from the holding furnace into a pouring tank that pours it into the molds. It takes about 45 pounds of the molten iron to cast the five wrench handles made by each mold. After they're filled, the sand molds pass through a cooling tunnel before they're broken apart by workers and dumped into a vibrator to shake the sand away from the handles. Then the seams left in the handles by the molds are ground away and the handles are finished with a coat of electrically charged auto body paint. The charge in the paint adheres it to the metal like a magnet for a watertight seal that protects the iron from leaky pipes. While the handles are being cast, 
the steel jaws of the pipe wrencher machine to add the teeth that bite into the pipes. The jaw comes in two parts. A flat plate called the heel jaw that sits on top of the handle and a piece shaped like a backwards J called the hook jaw. The hook jaw moves up and down from the heel jaw when you turn a nut on the side of the wrench to tighten the jaws around any size pipe. The steel in the jaws is actually stronger than the iron in the handles because the jaws grip the pipes and do all the work. After the teeth are cut, another machine mills threads into the long shank on the hook jaw to hold the nut that moves up and down the shank to tighten and loosen the wrench. When both pieces of the jaws are fully milled, they're heat treated in a furnace at 1500 degrees to strengthen the steel so the teeth in the jaws won't wear down when they bite into steel pipes. The final piece of the wrench is the nut. They're milled out of long steel rods by an automatic screw machine. It takes a series of eight rotating spindles to first drill out the center hole of the nut and then add the traction rings on the outer rim so it can easily be turned with just the thumb. After the nuts are shaped, a second machine called a nut tapper cuts threads on the inside of each nut to screw into the matching threads on the shank of the hook jaw. When all of the parts are ready, workers assemble the wrenches. First, the heel jaw is mounted to the top of the handle with a steel pin. A machine spins both ends of the pin to lock it in tight. Then the threaded shaft on the hook jaw slides into the handle and is secured with a nut. And the pipe wrench is ready to get a grip on just about any leaky pipe under your sink.